9. World War II Swamp Boat For the last decade, Nevada's largest reservoir, Lake Mead, has been plagued by droughts and plummeting water levels. This year is no exception. In fact, the lake's current level is at a record low. The receding waters have revealed some interesting finds, including human remains and a recently spotted World War II-era landing craft known as a Higgins boat. A boat builder named Andrew Higgins from New Orleans designed the craft during the 1930s based on his previous innovations for American swamp boats. More than 23,000 of the mostly plywood vessels were built during the war. They were used for transporting soldiers and fighting vehicles from ships to beaches, and played a crucial role in the Allied invasion of Normandy, famously known as D-Day. The Higgins boat found along Lake Mead was sold as military surplus years after the war, according to the Las Vegas Review Journal. It was used for surveying the Colorado River before being sold to a marina at Lake Mead, where it was eventually scuttled as part of a breakwater. Looking at it now, it's hard to believe that the boat once sat 185 feet, 56 meters underwater, and used to be a popular diving and tourism site. There seems to be no foreseeable ending to the climate conditions that are causing Lake Mead to dry out. It's currently only 27% full, and more long-forgotten objects are likely to appear if the ongoing drought continues. 8. World's Oldest Message in a Bottle in 2018, Tonya Illman and her son's girlfriend were walking along the beach in Perth, Australia, when they spotted a dark green glass bottle in the sand. Thinking that the old-fashioned piece would look good on her bookshelf at home, Illman took it with her. When her son's girlfriend went to pour the sand out of it, a rolled-up piece of paper with a string tied around it fell out. The note was a little damp, so the women took it home and set it out to dry. When they unrolled it, they saw faint handwriting in German. Not sure if the note was historically significant or just a modern hoax, the family took it to the Western Australia Museum along with the bottle it was found in. Experts identified a handwritten date from 1886 and a mentioning of a ship named Paula. The note was in exceptionally good condition, leading them to believe that it had washed up ashore shortly after being thrown into the water 132 years ago and then got buried in the sand. The team noticed that there was no cork and concluded that it probably deteriorated over time. Further research traced the bottle's origins to a German naval observatory program that studied global ocean currents. Research leader Ross Anderson told the Washington Post that the discovery reflects an early attempt to gain a scientific understanding of the world's ocean currents and drifting patterns, which modern scientists are still striving to fully understand. 7. Lost Legos If you've ever stepped on a Lego, you can know how excruciatingly painful it can be. Hopefully, Tracy Williams and her kids were wearing shoes when they started finding hundreds of pieces of the tiny plastic toy along the shoreline in South Devon, England in 1997. Ironically, many of the Legos were sea-themed. As they continued to appear on beaches throughout the area over the years, she became increasingly curious about where the Legos were coming from and why there were so many of them. Williams eventually learned that the toys came from a cargo ship called the Tokyo Express, which encountered rough waters about 20 miles, 32 kilometers off the coast of the southwest of England, shortly before the Legos began washing ashore. A rogue wave hit the vessel, causing 62 shipping containers to spill into the sea. One of them contained 5 million Lego pieces. Williams set up a Facebook page where beachgoers could document their Lego discoveries. Dubbed Lego Lost at Sea, it captured global attention. The overwhelming response inspired Williams to write a book about the Legos that washed ashore and what it says about pollution in our oceans. Speaking with the great British life journalist Chrissy Harris, she described her take on the matter as having part whimsical and part doom-like overtones. Harris further explained that as she and other beachcombers collected the Legos, they really began to notice just how much other plastic pollution washed ashore. She now participates in local beach cleanups and removes an alarming amount of garbage from the coastline on a regular basis. By providing an eye-opening story that people can relate to, the book, called Adrift, has spread a far-reaching message about the environment and the overwhelming trash problem that's touching every corner of the planet. 6 dozens of stabbed turtles. Over 30 endangered sea turtles were recently found suffering from stab wounds to their necks and flippers near a remote shoreline in southern Japan. Local residents found the distressed reptiles lying near fishing nets and alerted authorities. By the time experts from the local sea turtle museum arrived, many of the turtles had succumbed to their injuries and died. Yoshimitsu Sukakoshi, who works as a senior staff member at a local sea turtle conservation group, described the dead and dying turtles as an extremely grisly scene. 
He told news outlet AFP that he was in disbelief over the horrific act of violence against the gentle creatures, who tend to avoid getting too close to humans. A local fisherman confessed to stabbing the turtles after they got stuck in his net. He said that he released several back into the water, but that he struggled to untangle the rest and became frustrated and hurt them to try weakening them. Speaking with AFP, the head of a local fisherman's cooperative, Yuji Tabata, said that the man regretted his actions. He reportedly claimed that he was overwhelmed by the number of turtles and thought he was in physical danger when he committed the disturbing act. An Okinawa Times article condemned the fisherman's behavior and the manner in which he left the turtles on the beach to die, but it urged local officials to address the noticeable increase in problems between fishermen and the region's turtle population, which seems to be increasing despite the species' endangered status. Tabata reassured the public that incidents like this are rare, pointing out that fishermen are used to turtles getting caught in their nets and that they usually untangle them and release them without hurting them. He said that local officials are working to come up with ways to ensure that something like this won't happen again. What would you do if a bunch of sea turtles got stuck in your fishing nets? Tell us in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. 5. Helicopter on Granada Beach In October 1983, the US, along with six other Caribbean nations, invaded the island of Granada, about 100 miles 161 kilometers north of Venezuela. The mission was given the codename Operation Urgent Fury by the US military, and within just a few short days, the island was occupied. Cuban and American relations grew bitter after Fidel Castro's communist takeover. The missile crisis in 1962 and Cuban support for communist ventures abroad only made the relationship develop more friction, but the two forces never actually engaged each other in direct combat, that is, until Granada. It was definitely a war zone. Two UH-60 Black Hawk helicopters crashed into each other and went down in a tangled mess on the beach. A third helicopter tried to take off, but lost control and crashed into the wreckage of the other two helicopters. Out of the 772 Cuban troops deployed there, Havana suffered 25 killed, 59 wounded, and 638 captured. 4. Civil War Cannonballs and Skeletons Shortly after Hurricane Matthew ravaged the South Carolina shoreline in 2016, a beachgoer who was observing the storm damage found a cluster of Civil War-era cannonballs. The discovery was made near Charleston on Folly Island, which served as a Union fort and staging ground for attacks against Confederate strongholds. A military explosive team was called to the site, where they safely detonated the bombs. Numerous other Civil War artifacts have been found at Folly Island over the years, including the bodies of 14 Union soldiers that were unearthed by construction workers in 1987. They were identified as men from the 55th Massachusetts Regiment of the U.S. Colored Troops. During the conflict, the battalion occupied the island along the Massachusetts 54th Regiment, which was featured in the movie Glory. Oddly, the soldiers' remains didn't show any signs of war-related injuries, and 12 of the skeletons were curiously missing their skulls. To this day, nobody knows how they actually died. 3. Bizarre Blocks in 2012, Tracy Williams, a different Tracy Williams than before, was walking her dog along the beach near her home in Cornwall, England, when she saw a square-shaped object roughly the size of a cutting board with the word Tiji Peta etched onto it. She had no idea what the item was, but was intrigued enough by its uniqueness to take it home and use it as a garden decoration. Weeks later, William spotted another strange plank along the shore. It was the same size as the first one she found, had a similar rubber-like texture, and also featured the word Tijipete. Determined to figure out what the objects were and the story behind them, William spent years trying to learn more about them. One of the first major clues she found was an early 20th century photograph that showed a young boy sitting next to a pile of the planks in the Indonesian province of West Java. The picture was taken at a percha tree plantation called Tiji Pete. Before plastic was invented, the trees were used for producing a rubber-like material called gutta percha, which was used in many everyday objects and is incredibly resilient in water, according to the Washington Post. Williams took her search for answers to Facebook, where she connected with others who discovered Tiji Peta tablets along Western European beaches. Social media users reported finding them in the United Kingdom, Norway, Sweden, the Netherlands, Germany, Denmark, France, and Spain. The search garnered widespread media attention and help from various sources, including a British official who agreed with the theory that the blocks came from a Japanese ship called the Miyazaki Maru. According to the BBC, the vessel was carrying hundreds of thousands of gutta-percha planks when it was struck down by a German U-boat in 1917. 
The ship was en route to London when it sank over 150 miles, 241 kilometers off the English coast. Oceanographer Curtis Ebersmeyer told the BBC that it wasn't clear how far the tablets had traveled, but that they had been in the ocean long enough to float around the world at least three times. He also said that it's very likely people will still be finding the blocks a hundred years from now. 2. Giant Squid Giant squid sightings are extremely rare due to the legendary creature's elusive nature and deep-dwelling tendencies. Known for its strangeness and size, the species is thought to have inspired tales of the mythical ship-sinking sea monster known as the Kraken. Earlier this year, beachgoers found a giant squid carcass washed up along the shore at Long Beach in Komeji, South Africa. Cape Town resident Alison Paulus told Live Science that its body measured more than 7 feet, 2.1 meters long and that its tentacles appeared to be nearly 12 feet, 3.7 meters long. The sighting came two years after Adele Gross and her husband encountered a stranded giant squid during their daily morning walk in Cape Town, South Africa. Upon spotting the creature along Golden Miles Beach, Adele's first instinct was to try to put it back in the ocean. But when she took a closer look, she realized that the squid was dead and just happened to be remarkably intact, without any visible injuries. She theorized the large swells had washed it ashore the night before. The specimen measured roughly 13 feet, 4 meters long, and weighed around 660 pounds, 300 kilograms. Giant squids typically live at depths between 1,000 and 3,000 feet, 300 to 1,000 meters. Very little is known about these mysterious creatures, which were first captured on camera just 20 years ago. But scientists believe that they can grow at least 43 feet, 13 meters long, and that these massive marine animals may very well have inspired the tale of the Kraken and other sea monster legends. 1. A Mysterious Message During a beach cleanup at Highland Bayou Park in Lamarck, Texas recently, Terry Pettyjohn spotted a clear glass bottle with a piece of cardboard inside. It somehow stood out to him among the 400 pounds, 181 kilograms of garbage that the group picked up that day. Pettyjohn informed the people he was cleaning with about what he'd found and they eventually worked the cardboard out of the bottle. On it, someone had written, If you find this, please call. Beneath two phone numbers, they added, If not home, leave it on answer machine. Please leave number. The note contained four signatures. Members of the Keep Lamarck Beautiful Commission quickly discovered that the phone numbers were no longer active. They managed to trace one of the signatures to a man named Brian Standeffer through social media. 27 years ago, back in 1995, Standeffer and three of his friends put the message in the bottle for fun and threw it into the water at a location about 2 miles, 3.2 kilometers away from where it was found. He was 10 years old at the time. Looking back, he remembered thinking that maybe he and his buddies would find the bottled note again someday. But Standeffer soon forgot about it and didn't think about it again until he received a message from its finders. Speaking with Fox 10 Phoenix, he said that he's still close friends with the other boys who signed the note. At the time of its discovery, one of the now grown men had recently passed away, making Standeffer wonder if the bottle's reappearance was his way of comforting his surviving friends from beyond the grave. Thanks for watching. What's the craziest thing you've ever found on the beach? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.